We continue now at the top of Daf Samach Dalad Amar Aleph Meseches Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra Daf sixty four A. And the previous Amar Rav Dimi Mina Hardoi said that if a person sells a house, we don't assume that he also gets the umka varuma of that house, meaning to say he doesn't get the rights to dig underneath of the house. He doesn't necessarily get the rights to build above the house to build another floor on top of the house. You don't get those rights automatically. It has to actually be written into the contract that you get umka varuma that he gets the depths and the heights. Otherwise, he does not have those rights the seller would retain those rights. And the Gemara is now in the middle of bringing a proof to Rev Dimi from the Mishnah earlier. The Mishnah earlier says that when a person sells a house to the buyer, the buyer gets the house, but he does not get the roof that is on top of the house. And the Gemara now says, Now if you think, if it should enter your mind, that in a case where you don't write anything in, you just sell the house stam, which is the case earlier in that Mishnah, it doesn't say anything about writing in umkavaruma in the earlier Mishnah. So if you think that a person automatically does acquire Umkavaruma. So Kigavoa Saratvachim. So even if you have a situation where you have this roof and it has a fence around it, it has a it has a maka around it that is ten tvachim high, my have it, what's the difference? In other words, you should be able to acquire the roof. And the Rashbam explains, Visalka Daitach Bistama Kani Umkavaruma Kitaparachla El. This is a similar question as we asked earlier. If you think not like Rivdimi, if you think you automatically do get umkavaruma, so kigavoa yutvachim I have it, even if it has a maka that's ten tvachim, what's the difference? I'm why shouldn't he get that roof? Because that should be included in Ruma. That should be included in the heights. Elalavsh, I mean, I'd rather. Don't we see from here the Ruma mistama lokani that when you have when you buy a house, you don't get the area above that house. You don't get the airspace. Lo gag gavoa asari. You don't get a roof. Let's say if it has a maka that's ten tefachim. Velo aver miyud veilch. You don't get the airspace either. And the same thing should be true about the depths, whatever is underneath the house. Misdama, misdama, you're not going to get it. Klal Revdimi, it should be just like Revdimi. Umiu, nevertheless, gag she'ein lo maka. Now, let's say you had a roof that did not have a maka, it did not have a fence, gavoa yud, it did not have a fence that was ten tefachim high. So there already that's different. Kani misdama, there you would acquire that kind of a roof. Lehishtamesh ala gag, to use that roof. Deinza bechlal rom, because that's not even included in the word rom. That's not considered getting anything of substance above the house. That's considered part of the actual house. Like the upper floor of the house, that would be the same thing. And the Gemara answers, it could be that the mission is not a support for Revdimi, but rather, since here we're talking about a roof with a fence of ten tvachim, Choshev it's considered an area that's important on its own, and therefore that is not acquired, even though in general, maybe the airspace would be acquired, but this particular kind of roof would not be acquired, and the Rashbam explains, Umadchinon Gavoa Asara Choshev, we push off the proof and we say that if it's ten tvachim high, it's considered important on its own, Bayis Bifnei Atzmo, it's like its own house, Velo Mevata Legabe bias and therefore it's not going to be nullified so to speak to the rest of the house in, in a sale where you don't where you don't specify otherwise unless you specify and you say that it's going to include the umkavarum as well but then we could say according to this understanding that the airspace above the roof until the heavens the high new rumor which is really what rumor is the same would be true for the rights underneath the house it could be not like revdimi it could be the mission would hold that you do acquire automatically even in a regular kind contract where nothing is specified, and it's just in this situation where it was talking about a roof with a fence that was 10 tefachim high, so there that doesn't come along with the sale. And the Gemara continues, Amr Ravina Ravashi, Ravina said to Ravashi, Tashma, come and hear the following proof, this is from a statement of Reish Lakish earlier, the Amr Reish Lakish, because Reish Lakish says, Zos Omeris, this proves, Hamocher Bayis Lechaver, if somebody sells a house to his friend, V'yomer Lo, and he says to the buyer, Al Menas Shediotoh El Yonah Shali, that I'm selling you this house, but it's on the condition that the upper story is mine, that re- that continues to belong to the seller, so Diyotoh El Yonah Shalo, so we say over there that the upper story does in fact continue to belong Belong to the seller. V'yamrin and Lamai Hilchasen. When Reish Lakish made that statement, we asked in the Gemara earlier, "What practical halach is he talking about?" And there was a machlokas Amoraim how to understand Reish Lakish. Rav Zvid Amar Rav Zvid says Shim Ratz Lahotzi Bazizin Motzi. What it means is that the seller now has the right to, to take zizin projections, and he wants to put them out from that upper story over the chutzer of the buyer. He's allowed to do that. That's the right that he's retaining. Rav Papa Amar Rav Papa says Shim Ratz Livnos Aliyah Al Gaba. That if he wants to build above, if he wants to build an 
upper floor, so Boni, he's allowed to, to build it. And the Gemara now says, Visalka Daitach, Bistama Lokani. Now, if you're going to say that in a general sale where nothing is specified, so he does not acquire, so Lomali Almanas, so why do we need this specific condition, Almanas, that I have these rights? Automatically he has those rights. What's the Almanas even helping for? And as the Rashbam will explain, we're asking specifically within Rav Papa. Rav Papa is saying that when he says Almanas, what it gives him the right to do is it gives him the, the right to build above the house, but that should be automatic because the buyer does not have that right automatically, which means the seller does. Why do you have to say the words Almanas to get that right? And the Gemara answers, as we mentioned this earlier, Almanas, the Almanas helps. The Inafil Hadir Banila, what it means is if it falls, then he's allowed to rebuild it. That's what the Almanas is doing in this case. And the Rashbam explains, Tashma coming here proof, the Amrish Lakish, because Rash Lakish says, Midra Papa Makshi, the Rashbam says, we're asking from the Rav Papa version of Reish Lakish. Meaning, again, Rav Papa explains Reish Lakish to mean that now the seller is allowed to build above the house. And the Rashbam explains, Now, if you're going to say that automatically when you have a sale, the Lokeach, the buyer is the one that has the rights to the Umka and the Ruma. He has the rights to the area below and the area above. Then it would make sense to say that the specific condition in this case where he says, Almanas, the seller says that he's keeping the Diyota al Yona. That would make sense in the way that Repapa explained it. That let's say the seller wants to build up, he wants to build above this story. He wants to build more upward above the house, Bona, then he has that right to build. And that's why he needs to make that condition, because if he doesn't make that condition, then it would be the buyer that it would have the rights to that area of above the diota, mistama with any sale, even if there's nothing nothing specified, the rumo shall buy his kona bechol makom mistama. Because then we would say that the heights, the airspace above the house, the buyer gets in all situations, even in a regular sale. Ve'afilo hecha diiko diota heliona she shall mocher. Even if the upper story belongs to the seller, the buyer still has the rights to the ruma. So if you say the buyer has the rights, it makes sense that the almanas is adding that right now to the seller, which the seller would not automatically have. Ela izal gadayatach the mistama lo kani. But if you're going to say that in general, in a general sale, the buyer does not get the ruma, meaning if you're going to say, like Rev Dimi Minah Hardoi said, that the buyer does not have that right, that right automatically, Elishal Mocher, it's automatically the right of the seller in a standard sale. So Lamali Almanas, then what's the Almanas adding? The seller already has that right. Maya Hani Tanai Hamiyusar, what do you need this extra condition for, this extra stipulation? Below Tanoi Nami Havi Kani Mocher Lidioto El Yona Ulu Rumo Shalbais. Without the stipulation, the seller would also get the upper story and and he would get the rights to the airspace above the house. Vim Hayerotza live knows born if he wanted to build, he can build. This right now, the one asking the question in the Gemara understands Rapapa in this fashion. And now we're going to revise Rapapa to the understanding we had earlier when we brought Rapapa. Here's the text we have in the explanation of Rabbi Khananel. The enough Lahadir Banila. What's actually going on according to Rapapa is the seller is retaining the right to the right to rebuild the upper story if it falls. Leola mistama, meaning you can say that really in a general sale, lo kani lo ruma, the buyer will not have the rights to the airspace. Udukwamrit yisr tano So if you're going to say that, so then what do you need the extra words here for? What are they helping for? If automatically the seller has these rights, lahachi ahani, they help for the following. The inafla diyota, we're talking about, let's say that upper story, which he says that he's keeping that upper story for himself, let's say that falls, hadr banila. So then he's going to be allowed to rebuild it. Mom says, I already explained this earlier. Repapa is not talking like we just thought above. He's not talking about building above the upper story. He's talking about rebuilding the diota if it falls down. The Rashbam says it seems that that's the way to explain it. That's what it appears to me. There are other ways to explain the Gemara. But those do not have substance. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah. When a person sells the house, it does not automatically include the pit and the cistern. That's not included in the sale. And even if he writes in the sale that he's including the depths and the heights, it does not automatically include the bore and the dose. 
And the Rashbam explains the Avabi Shakasav Lo Umka Varuma, Kidu Ukma Revdimi Begamar Leil. This is like Revdimi explained in the Gemara earlier. The Umka Varuma Bistama Lokani, that it's not automatic that the buyer gets the Umka Varuma. Viahani Umka Varuma, Limikni Umka Varuma. And so therefore, when you write in the words Umka Varuma, that includes that the buyer gets Umka Varuma, meaning the rights to dig underneath, the rights to build above. Velo Limikni Borvidos, but it does not mean to include, meaning the words Umka and Ruma do not mean to include that the buyer gets the bore and the dose, that he gets the pit and the cistern, because those have a different use in the house, because those are used primarily to draw water, and so therefore, again, those are not included. And the Mishnah continues, According to Rabbi Akiva, he needs to purchase for himself a path. And the Chachamim say, he does not need to purchase for himself a path. And the Rashbam explains, it means that the seller needs he needs to buy a path from the buyer labor in order to be able to walk to his own pit and cistern because we assume that the seller sells generously that's the opinion of Rabbi Akiva meaning to say when we're saying now that the seller retains the bore and the dose so now how is, how is he going to get to the bore and the dose if the one who owns the property now is the buyer Rabbi Akiva says he actually has to buy from the buyer he has to buy the rights to go to his to the bore and the dose, because he we assume that he sold generously, that he sold everything except for the bore and the dose to the buyer. For Rabbanan Svirlu, but the Rabbanan they hold the mocher ba'ayin ra mocher that when a seller sells, he is stingy in his sale. V'shayer derech la'atzma, so he automatically retains for himself the rights to the path mimasha mocher from what he sold, and so therefore not only does the seller retain the bore and the dose according to the chachamim, according to the Rabbanan, but he also retains the derech automatically. He retains the path to the bore and the dose as well. And the Mishnah continues, Umoda Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Akiva admits, Bizman Sha'amar Lo, in a situation where he says to him, where the seller says to the buyer, Chutz Me'elu, that I'm selling with the exception of the bore and the dose, he specifically says, I'm not giving the bore and the dose. So then already, since he added that language, he admits, She'ein Sarach Likach Derech, then the seller does not need to buy back the path to the bore and the dose. It's automatic. When he's saying that I'm specifically excluding the bore and the dose from the sale, he's also giving himself the right to the derech, to the path, to that bore and the dose. And the Rashbam explains, Bizman Sha'amar Le Chutz Me'elu. If he says to the buyer, with the exception of these, Chutz Me Bor Vidos, meaning I'm saying that I'm not selling you specifically the Bor and the Dose, so Tanai Shalol He didn't need to put that stipulation in. Sharei Enon Bechlal Bais. They were never included in the sale of the house in the first place. Ela Litafuye Mil Sakasi Vishayer Lo Derech. And rather, the reason why he's adding those words is because he wants to add rights for himself. He wants the Derech as well. Well, the Rabbanon Lo Asa Litafuye Klal. Now, according to the Rabbanon, it's not adding anything, these words. Without that already, he has the derech, he has the path. The reason why I'm saying it is just to ensure that there's no arguments over this. That the buyer shouldn't say, you sold me the whole house. You didn't hold back for yourself a path. Because not everyone who sells knows all of the laws. And that's why he explained specifically something that didn't necessarily need to be explained. And the Mishnah continues. Let's say a person sells to somebody else the boar and the dose meaning to say the person who owned this entire property, he's keeping everything for himself and just selling the pit or the cistern to a different buyer. So in that situation, does the buyer automatically get a derech or not? So that's a machlokas again. Rabbi Kiva, Omer, Rabbi Kiva says, no likach lo derech. The buyer does not need to buy a path for himself. It's automatically included in the sale because according to Rabbi Kiva, the seller is selling generously. The chachamim, Omer, the chachamim say, no, tzarech likach lo derech. The buyer has to pay an additional amount if he wants a path to the bore and the dose because we do not assume that the seller is selling generously. And the Rashbam explains, vidos If he's selling the boar and the dose to someone else, he's keeping the house for himself. Rabbi Kiva Omer ain't sarach halokech likach lo derech. Rabbi Kiva says the buyer doesn't need to buy the rights to the path labor vidos to the pit or the cistern shakana which he bought the mocher buying yafa mocher lo because according to Rabbi Kiva again we assume that the seller sold generously and the Gemara says Yosef Ravina v'kakashalei Ravina was sitting and he asked the following question Hainu bor Hainu dos isn't a bor and a dos isn't it essentially the same thing a bor is translated as a pit a dos as a cistern Amar le Ravatosva le Ravina Ravatosva said to Ravina Tashma come near the following proof. 
The Tanya, because we learned in a Brisa, Echer Habor vi Echer Hados Bekarka, both a boar and a dose, they're both dug into the ground. Elisha Habor Bechafir, the difference is that a pit is something that is just dug. Bahados Bebinion, but by the dose you have to build as well, because otherwise the dirt is going to absorb all of the water that it is supposed to hold. Yosef Ravashi Vikakashale Ravashi was sitting and he asked, again, Hainu Bor, Hainu Dos, isn't Bor and Dos the same thing? Amr Le Mark Shisha Braid of Chisla Ravashi, Mark Shisha, the son of Ravchista, said to Ravashi, Tashma, come near the following. Proof to Tanya because we learned in a Brisa Echad Habor Viechad Hados Bekarka both a boar and a dose they're both dug into the ground Elisha Habor Bechafir the difference is that the boar that is dug of Hados Bebinyan but by the dose it also involves building and the Rashbam explains Hainu Bor Vainu Dos a boar and dose is the same meaning Ezehu Bor Vezehu Dos what's the difference Valoein Heker Bein Zelozeh there's no real difference Sheshnei and Amuk and Bekarka both of them are deep in the ground Veyeshba and Mayim Mechunasim they both gather water Velama the Why do we have to learn both of them? It seems to be the same thing. And the Gemara answered, Bechafira means to say a boar is Bechafira, Bekarka Kosha, meaning you're digging it in land which is hard. The earth is hard. Shemachzik Mayim below Binyan, therefore it's able to hold the water. You don't have to add anything. You don't have to build anything over there. You just pour the water in. But Bebinyan, but a dose is Bebinyan. It's built, meaning, Chofren Bor Ba'afer Tichoach, meaning when you dig, you're digging in loose loose earth. Ubonin Lokosa Lavonim, so you have to build a wall of stones in order to retain the water. Umikri Dose, that's called a dose. And the Rashbam further explains, and therefore, a ton of bore. Let's say we only taught in the Mishnah the case of bore. Hava mina hani mili bore shu I would think maybe that's only true by a bore, which is dug. That's not included in the sale. Avol dos shu bebinyan, but by a dose, which is built. Kein habayis, that's already similar to a house. Hareu bechlal bayis, maybe that is included in the house. It's included in the sale. Vitan a dose, and let's say the Mishnah only taught the halacha by dose. Mishum de binyan bifnayatzmo, because that's its own binyan, so maybe it's not included. Vachasha, because it's considered important on its own. It's not included. Avol bore, but if it's just a pit which was dug, lo chasha, maybe that's not important. Vilivotel gabi bias, therefore it's nullified to the house, and maybe that would have been included in the sale. And so tzricha, that's why it's necessary to teach both cases. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. V'tzarech likach lo derech divrei Rabbi Akiva. Again, in the Mishnah, Rabbi Akiva said that the seller, when he's selling everything which does not include the bore and the dose, he's retaining for himself the bore and the dose. But he doesn't automatically retain for himself a path. He has to buy the path to the bore and the dose. The Chachamim Omer Eino Tzarech and the Chachamim say he doesn't need to buy it. It's automatic. If he retains the bore and the dose, he retains the path as well. And the Gemara says, My love is it not b'hakam ifligi that they are arguing in the following, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Dafsamech Dalid Omid Beis.